The arrival of fentanyl into the illegal drug supply was a game changer. Beginning in 2016, overdose deaths soared. This prompted activists, doctors, and politicians to call for a new approach to drugs, one that would end the epidemic of overdoses. So how did we get here? This epidemic is rooted in drug prohibition. Until the early 20th century, products made from opium and coca, the plant from which cocaine is derived, were commonly sold over the counter. People used these drugs to manage pain and for cultural and spiritual reasons. In the late 18 and early 1900s, moral reformers pushed for stricter controls of these drugs. Their advocacy was fueled by racism. They perpetuated stereotypes and false narratives about indigenous, black, and Chinese individuals as corruptors of a white Christian nation. In 1868, there was a ban on the sale of alcohol to indigenous people. In 1908, Canada banned the possession of opium, which mainly targeted Chinese men. Canada's early drug laws were based on systemic racism, not evidence. Overnight, law-abiding people were criminalized and harsher policies came into force. By 1929, Canada had some of the harshest drug policies in the world. These laws have affected black, indigenous, and marginalized Canadians the most and haven't reduced drug use. The United Nations estimates that use of illegal drugs across the globe has actually increased by 30%. Harsher drug laws are creating more harm than good. They fuel transnational organized crime that sells illegal drugs 24-7. These drugs can be toxic and fatal because there's no quality control. And criminalizing drugs fuels social injustice and stigmatizes and marginalizes people with complex health and social needs. As we're learning, enforcement and policing is very expensive and it's an ineffective band-aid that doesn't address the root cause. But a public health and human rights approach to drugs would. It would focus on health, social equity, and human rights so that everyone gets the support they need. It would address basic needs like income, housing, and education so that people are better able to manage using drugs. This approach also acknowledges factors like criminalization, colonialism, gender, race, and disability, and how these factors shape one's relationship with drugs. A human rights and public health approach recognizes that addiction is often a symptom of underlying biological, psychological, and social issues. It includes people who use drugs in all aspects of policy helps reduce the harms of drug use through harm reduction, and provides access to evidence-based treatment. We know that our drug policies are broken and struggling to respond to the overdose crisis. It's time to shift our thinking. It's time to save lives.